Good morning, everyone, and happy Halloween. To celebrate Halloween, we're going to be playing some Innistrad Flashback Draft <laughs> today. Um, so Sturmgeist is a very good card, uh, and so is Crew and Outlaw, depending on which, uh, which deck we want to play here. I know we did Spirits. I think Spirits is stronger. I have not drafted a dedicated Werewolf deck. Um... So maybe that might be some more fun, though it is a little more aggro. We could take Ghoul Caller's Bell and try for the mill deck. Um, this is the most important mill card. Yeah, we'll take Crew and Outlaw. If I start getting past, um, like, multiple Curse of the Bloody Tomes, then maybe we'll go mill, but... Alright, Civilized Scholar is not bad. Everybody knows my opinion on Invisible Stalker, if you've seen the stream VOD, which I'm still working on. I'm sorry that it hasn't gone up yet. Uh, I uploaded it, and it just, like, wouldn't process. It's stuck at 100% processing. Um, so I'm going to try and get that fixed. I think we take Into the Maw of Hell, even though it's kind of expensive. It's um, really good removal, and it punishes your opponent for splashing. So I'm going to take Into the Maw of Hell. Reckless Waif is not bad for the Werewolf aggro deck, so we'll take Reckless Waif. There's also a Prey Upon in that pack, which I do like. Crossway Vampire, just just saying your opponent can't block with a particular creature this turn is good. Kessig Wolf, uh, Kessig Wolf is um, also pretty good, being able to um, give it first strike when it attacks. I think I'm going to take the Vampire. We're a very heavy red deck right now. Alright, there's a Clifftop Retreat. The Nightbird's Clutches. I guess we'll take Clifftop Retreat. We could be splashing a little bit of white, potentially, in this deck. Ghost Quarter, Fuhrer of the Bitten. I mean, probably Fuhrer of the Bitten. It's, I guess, the best card for an aggro deck. Love me some Infernal Plunge. I've done some shenanigans with Infernal Plunge. Not in limited, but... Alright, there's a Blood Craze Neonate, Curse of the Pierced Heart. Um, if I didn't have any two-mana creatures, I would take Curse of the Pierced Heart. For a while, I think Popper was playing this as an actual, um, like an actual burn spell, because usually it would stick around for more than three turns, so it'd be better than, like, a Searing Spear to your opponent's face. We'll take the Neonate, though. It's a very good aggressive creature. Skier's Dag Cultist is not bad. Uh, Rolling Temblor is kind of the opposite of what we want to be doing here. Ancient Grudge could be good, um... There's not a lot of artifacts we're worried about. Bump of the Night is pure aggression um, and reach, which is probably what we want in an aggro deck. Gnaw to the Bone. Gnaw to the Bone is really good versus opposing aggro decks. I'm going to take Bump, but there's not a lot of black cards I want to play as far as I n remember right now. Um, we will take Pitchburn Devils because we're a little light on creatures. Scourge of Gaia Reach. I'm not really a big fan of. I think it's not bad, but I think Pitchburn Devils is going to be better on average, especially with Skier's Dag Cultist. We can turn Pitchburn Devils into a Lava Axe if we want to. All right, Feral Ridge Wolf is a creature in our color. Kessig Wolf came around. Um, Spare from Evil is pretty decent. Infernal Plunge goes to the sideboard. We're not playing it. Rune Chanter's Pike. We don't have a lot of instants and sorceries um, to take advantage of Rune Chanter's Pike. It does grant First Strike, which is good, um, but I think we're better off taking Ashmouth Hound, Harvest Pyre, or Tormented Pariah. Because we're a little light on creatures, I think I'm going to take the Hound. Tormented Pariah is okay, but Ashmouth Hound is really good because there's a lot of X1 creatures and tokens, and Ashmouth Hound completely invalidates those for blockers. Lumberknot is a really good creature if you're doing the, like, green-black morbid kind of deck, I think it is. <sighs> Alright. Um, Hanware Watchkeep. I don't like this card in the Werewolf deck because it's a 3-mana 1-5. Like, half the time, yeah, it's a 3-mana it's a 5-5, three five five, but lots of Ghoul Caller spells going around. Maybe I should have done Mill. I haven't seen any of the, like, other support cards for Mill, though, so probably not. Um, I'm going to take Traitor Traitor's Blood. Having one of the threatened effects is usually pretty good. All right, now we have some options. We can take Manor Gargoyle, because just having a big creature that eventually becomes a 4-4 flyer is good. Um, Falcon Wrath Noble is good. It's sort of like we're kind of an aristocratic kind of deck. We do have a Skier's Dag Cultist. 
it's a good curve topper. It helps us get in damage when we attack on what would not necessarily be a good attack. Tribute to Hunger is good removal. Geist Flame is just pings, but they're not bad. I think I'm going to take the Noble. Um, so I think black is our other color. A Stromkirk Noble is great. Uh, this was like the premier red aggro one drop for a while. Um, so it's it's kind of the card we want to be playing in this deck. Into the Maw of Hell, Village Ironsmith, and Victim of Night are all good. Hopefully they wheel. Uh, Disciple of Grizzlebrand, Rackish Air. Whenever a vampire you control deals combat damage to a player, put a 1 1 counter on it. We have a couple of vampires Stromkirk Noble, Blood Craze, Neonate, Crosway Vampire. Rackish Air is probably the pick. I really want to take Disciple of Grizzlebrand because we do have Traitorous Blood. I'm going to take the Air. Okay. Why is Auto Select taking Makeshift Mauler? Hmm. I'm going to take Rage Thrower. Rage Thrower could be a good curve topper. Sure, now we see all the mill cards. Uh, I'll take Fury of the Bitten. Blood Craze Neonate or another Waif? Um, I think... Ooh. Um, I think Neonate is the better card. Waif is insane if you can play it on turn one and your opponent can't play anything else. Like, their, their first play is on turn three. Um, but I think Neonate has slightly better synergy with our deck because we do have uh, Rakish Air now. There are eight cards in this pack, so we only get one. I want to take the Neonate because we are light on two drops. Uh, Tormented Pariah. I guess we'll take a Patrician. Tribute to Hunger is removal, and we don't have a lot. Uh, sure, Skeletal Grimace, but I'm probably not playing it. This is a really good mono red deck. I mean, like, we have we have some good black splash options, too, if we don't want to be mono red. Stony Silence is not playable in Limited at all. Vampiric Fury is, like, looking better and better the more that we draft, because we're getting a lot of, like, Neonates and stuff. And Vampiric Fury grants First Strike. We'll take a third Neonate. Heretic's Punishment. Choose any target, mill three cards, and it deals damage equal to the highest converted mana cost. This could give us some reach, actually. And we do have a couple of high CMC cards. I think we do take Heretic's Punishment here. Desperate Ravings is okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll take Heretic's Punishment. Um, yeah, this is a Pitch Burn Devil's pick, like 100%. Uh, I'll take Curse of the Pierced Heart just to have a little bit of reach. Uh, Vampire, actually, Vampire Interloper is probably a little better. A 2-mana two 2-1 two Flyer that can't block is still pretty good. Um, yeah, Kessig Wolf, I think, is a little bit better than Tormented Pariah. All right, Reckless Wave. Uh... Let's see, Curse the Pierced Heart. I think we'll take the Waif. If we can keep the curve low, it's going to be good. Take the Waif. Uh, from what I remember, Reckless Waif is actually, like, the 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 best case scenario is nuts, right? You play a 1-mana 3-2, and it's just it's just insane. Um, but every, basically every other scenario, and it's not really that great. I just realized Vampiric Fury is 2-mana and not 3, like I was thinking for some reason. Um, black is definitely our splash color, so I'll put Maw the Mire in the sideboard. I don't think we would ever bring that in, but who knows. Uh, Stromkirk Patrol, Curse of the Pierced Heart. Uh, I'm not going to play Wooden Stake. Okay. So, we need to drop this curve, and we definitely have enough red cards. We don't need to be playing black. Um, I kind of want to curve out at five. I don't think I need Into the Maw of Hell. Um, Tormented Pariah seems less than good. Four good aggro one-drops. Fear of the Bitten seems really good to put on some of these cards that have to attack all the time anyway. Uh, Feral Ridge Wolf seems like one of my worst cards. It is a way to sneak in a bunch of damage with like the fire breathing effect. I think Heretic's Punishment might be a little ambitious. We have 17 good good creatures. Yeah, let's, let's not run Heretic's Punishment. All right. <laughs> oh man, sorry for drafting fun police. Kano, what did you do for Halloween? I stopped everyone else from having fun. <laughs> oh man. Well, here we go. Vampires and werewolves. All right. Here we go. Round 1, we're on the play. Yep, that's uh, it's the best one drop we've, well, the second best one drop we've got, and our best two drop, so 
And our best three drop, I think. Start Reckless Wave. Pass the turn. A lot of decks do not have plays on turn one. Yeah. Alright, sweet. A Blood Craze Neonate. Attack for three. When it goes to 17. They untap. They play a Plains. Draw a Mountain. Play a Mountain. Go to combat. Attack for five. Neonate gets bigger. Play Kruin Outlaw. When it plays their first spell on turn three. Draw a mountain, play a mountain, go to combat, attack for eight. Okay, when it takes down the neonate, takes five, goes to ten. Or goes to seven, excuse me. Play Skier's Dag Cultist, pass the turn. When it plays a Gavany Township and a Gustav Shepherd, we untap and draw Reckless Waif. Hmm. Play the Waif. Kill the spirit. Okay, the opponent has Moment of Heroism. So we're just going to play Neonate and pass the turn. <sighs> I did that pre-combat because I didn't want my opponent to actually <laughs> like be able to gain life or something crazy like that. Opponent Fiend Hunter's Crew and Outlaw. All right. We untap. We draw Fuhrer of the Bitten. So we can play Fuhrer of the Bitten on Neonate, and they would have to block it down. They could have another combat trick. I think I'm okay with this. We'll hold back Waif. And if our opponent has a combat trick or something we're not happy about, we'll just send it to the dome with Skier's Dag Cultist. I don't think my opponent has many good blocks here. And I think they're really their only semi-decent block is to block all three. Okay, and they lose Gustav Shepard. Pass the turn. Opponent plays an island. They're playing three colors. This might be for, like, a Feeling of Dread flashback or something. Okay, I'm going to play as an Orchard Spirit. We untap. Draw a Mountain. Play a Mountain. Go to combat. Attack for four because we have to. Okay, I'm going to double blocks. If their last card is a combat trick, we want to try and kill Orchard Spirit. If it's not a combat trick, we want to kill Voiceless Spirit. You know what? I'm actually just going to trade here. Because we have pitch burn devils. Yeah, because that way, even if they had a combat trick, we would have been able to kill whatever they tried to cast it on. Okay, they activate Fiend, or they activate Gavany to uh, make Fiend Hunter into a real threat and concede. Okay. Well, I guess it was a blocker, not a threat, but uh, no adjustments, run it back. So one thing that our deck should do, especially because we have uh, four really good one-drops and four really good two-drops to be playing, uh, we should be punishing a lot of decks because we should be really consistent. Uh, like, I don't even want to keep this hand, even though it's, like, pretty good, because we have hands like this where we get to play uh, Falconrath or Stromkirk Noble on turn one. And Stromkirk Noble... Uh, one of the most common creature types is humans, and humans can't block Stromkirk Noble. Opponent did mulligan to six. Play the Noble. Pass the turn. Having Vampiric Fury here as well also means that we can kill... Potentially kill something that uh, would otherwise be a threat. Okay, I was hoping for an actual two drop there, but unfortunately we didn't get it. Hit them for one. Stromkirk Noble gets bigger. Opponent has no plays. We draw a mountain, play a mountain, go to combat. Uh, this could be a... Okay. I was trying to think, I don't, I was like, there's no puncturing light. That was Shadows over Innistrad. So we'll give, uh, Stromkirk Noble first strike here. Trade a card for Ambush Viper and some damage. When it draws their third land, plays a Fiend Hunter. Okay. We untap, we draw Kessig Wolf. Play Kessig Wolf. Pass the turn. Night Revelers having haste is actually really good versus uh, Fiend Hunter. Okay, opponent passes. Draw Ashmouth Hound. So, in an attempt to be more mana efficient, we're going to attack with Kessig Wolf, see if our opponent blocks. If they have Moment of Heroism, they will block. Okay. I am not going to activate Kessig Wolf because they have Moment of Heroism. Yep. 
Okay. So opponent gains three life, does not lose Fiend Hunter this turn. We play another Kessig Wolf, and then we play Ashmouth Hound. Yeah, activating Kessig Wolf there, like, our opponent was telegraphing this so hard that it definitely wasn't the correct choice, especially after having seen that combat trick. Um, and this lets us play Ashmouth Hound, which is another creature that can attack into Fiend Hunter, or Chapel Geist as an example. So we untap and we draw Fear of the Bitten. Play Night Revelers. Go to combat. And I'm just going to attack. If they block Kessig Wolf and kill it, that's fine. Okay. Opponent takes six. Pass the turn. Opponent is a bit stuck on mana. We draw Curse of the Pierced Heart. So Hamlet Captain, when it blocks, can pump Fiend Hunter up to a 2 4. So we're going to put Fear of the Bitten on Ashmouth Hound to give both of our creatures 4 power. And make it so they don't really have a real block. Go to combat. Attack for 8. Okay, opponent takes 8 and goes to 8. Put a Curse of the Pierced Heart on that player. Pass the turn. I miss Curses. I'm glad they brought them back briefly in Amonkhet. Um, and I really want Curse of Misfortunes to become a deck. Or, or like even just like a tier 3 rogue modern deck. Um, but uh, I don't know how likely that is that they will. And they won't at least for a while. Okay, we draw a Reckless Waif, go to combat, attack. They can block and kill something if they want. Okay, they're going to kill Night Revelers. Take four, they're at three. Play Reckless Waif, pass the turn. Opponent takes one, goes to two. And opponent scoops it up. Well, if I was worried about not having this video out on time... It should be short, which means my recording processing will be pretty short, which means this video should definitely be out on time for Halloween. Um, because I'm still absorbing caffeine, I don't know if I apologized for the stream VOD being up yet. I think I did, but um, yeah, that's still in the works because YouTube's being weird. I imagine there's a lot of uploading happening uh, on uh, Halloween and the day before, so maybe that's why. All right, well, we can't keep this hand. We have a million better hands than this one. Um, this hand is... This hand's not bad, actually. I wish it had a one-drop in it. We are on the draw. I'm gonna put back Fuhrer of the Bitten. It might technically be correct to put back a land, um, but I, I, I need three land this game. Okay, we draw Pitchburn Devil, start Mountain. Opponent plays a Plains. Into an Abyssinian Priest. Okay. Play Ashmouth Hound. Pass the turn. We ended up drawing a land on time for our 3-drop, but that could have been pretty bad. Opponent plays an Unruly Mob. Play a Mountain. Go to combat. I am going to attack. They can trade the Priest for it if they want. They do. They want a 2-2. Two, they want a 2-2. Two, two. Sure. So we're going to play Rackish Air. Hopefully they only have one blocker, so we can use Crossway Vampire to uh, sneak in some damage with Rackish Air here. I'm going to play a Silver Chase Fox. They do attack. Awesome. No blocks. Draw Kessig Wolf. Play the Vampire. We'll say Silver Chase Fox. Cannot block. Go to combat. Attack for two, and Rackish Air should become a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. One plays their fourth land. And a Mausoleum Guard. That is annoying. Okay. Draw a mountain. Play a mountain. Land a pitch burn devils. Pass the turn. <laughs> no attacks. So Vampiric Fury would be good. Um, our opponent is actually a two-color deck. Which is generally what you should be playing. You shouldn't be playing things like Mono Red, but... When it severs the bloodline. Oh man. I love using this card as a kill spell in standard. Alright. Play a Kessig Wolf. We don't have a real reason to be playing out these lands, I don't think. It's not like we have a fireball or anything like that. <sighs> yeah, we'll wait to attack. Bonds of Faith. Alright, well, that's annoying. But it has a Village Cannibals. Play Stromkirk Noble, which 
If we can get in with Stromkirk Noble, uh, if we can deal with that Silver Chase Fox, they can't block the Noble. Man, if we'd had that in our opener, they probably would have had to sever that and not the Pitchburn Devils. Okay, opponent plays a Cloistered Youth. Passes. Draw a Mountain. Play a Mountain. Pass the turn. They can make Unholy Fiend into another blocker for Stromkirk Noble if they want, but then they start losing life. Okay, they do. They're starting to get to the point where they can be aggressive. Yeah. Alright, no blocks yet. And now we're to the point where we have no card advantage because we are only red. Okay. I'm actually going to concede this game because there's not a lot we can top deck that's going to reverse this. I guess we had Rage Thrower. Oh, no, we don't have Rage Thrower. I didn't, didn't even have it in the deck because um, it was really expensive. Uh, Yeah, we didn't have a lot of good outs. So I'm just going to run it back as is because we don't. I don't want to bring in another color and I don't think any of our red cards are really going to help that much. It's possible, like, Feral Ridge Wolf is probably what I should be bringing in in case we get to another board stall. We can force through damage with a giant trampling wolf, but um, I think I have to mulligan for, like, an aggressive one-drop and then Blood Craze Neonate kind of a hand. Alright, we'll play first. Uh, we have Reckless Wave and we have Curse of the Pierced Heart. I'm going to try keeping this. Crew and Outlaw would be a great follow-up. I would prefer if we had an actual Blood Craze Neon, like a real creature for a 2-drop. And hopefully our opponent does not have a 1. They do. And it's Doom Traveler. <laughs> okay. Um, we draw another Reckless Waif. Um, play the Waif. Pass the turn. <clears throat> kind of have to hope our opponent misses for a bit. That's the bad thing about playing um, Reckless Waifs in a Mono Red deck. As a mono red deck, you're frequently trying to play a spell every turn. So if your opponent uh, doesn't miss playing a spell, you're going to be playing a spell. So werewolves are kind of bad. <laughs> They're always going to be their front half. Unless you take a turn off of playing, which you're mono red, you probably don't want to do. Okay, we draw Skier's Dag Cultist, go to combat. Attack for six. Opponent's got nothing. They go to 14. Okay, put a curse on them. Pass the turn. So if our opponent's missing land drops, they are not going to be able to flip these uh, Merciless Predators back. Or if they're missing spells, I guess. I don't know why I, th I was thinking they're missing lands. My brain ain't working today. I had like, I, I didn't sleep right last night. I woke up, I woke up with hunger pangs so strong they hurt. Um, I don't know why. I was having like weird, crazy nightmares last night, like... I had some dream about Porter chewing up an electrical conduit and then like ruining the uh, electrical system in the apartment or like the, the town home that I live in. And like, <laughs> it was just like crazy, random, like nonsensical kind of stuff. All right. So our opponent can double block down one of the predators. Village Bell Ringer is a pretty good card here. Okay. Uh, we kill Doom Traveler. They get a spirit. They take three and go to ten. So we go to second main and play crew and outlaw. Pass the turn. When it takes one, goes to nine. Curse is doing work. It's possible I have misevaluated curse and that this card is actually really good because of how fast it stacks up damage and limited. But I'll be honest, I didn't actually draft this card a lot before, so I don't have a ton of experience with it. Okay, opponent plays a Slayer of the Wicked, killing crew and outlaw. Ouch. Okay, opponent gets in for one. We go to 17. Draw Mountain. Play Skier's Dag Cultist. Um, we can offer the trade here with Slayer of the Wicked. I don't think we do. Um, Skier's Dag Cultist means that any creature we play, we can accelerate this Curse of the Pierced Heart damage by just, like, shocking our opponent's face instead. That seems better. Um, I'm trying to think of what the worst... I don't think there's a spell in Innistrad Limited that like grants your creature's lifelink or anything like that. And yeah, we're kind of hoping to draw a three drop or less here, which is most most of our deck. So like we should, right? They get a silver inlaid dagger. All right. We untap. Merciless Predator flips flips back. We draw Pitchburn Devils. Pitchburn Devils would be great if we could play it. 
So pass the turn. Opponent takes a damage. Reckless Wave flips. Opponent plays a Plains. Equips a Spirit. Goes to combat. Attacks for five in the air. No blocks. We go to 14. Uh, we're going to sack Merciless Predator to deal damage to our opponent. Untap. Draw Rakish Air. Play Rakish Air. Pass the turn. I think we're winning the race here, unless our opponent has a, a really strong Anthem effect. Or like a Butcher's Cleaver. But it plays a land. They go to combat and they attack. So block here. Shoot our opponent, sack Rakish Air. Take five, go to six. Opponent goes to two. And as long as we untap, uh, we can just sack Skier's Dag Cultist to itself. Okay. Game three. Um, even though we have 17 lands, getting to five mana seems like it's been hard. Yeah, I'm just going to run it back. I still don't want to bring in black. I think just staying mono red is fine. Okay, one drop, two drop, Fear of the Blitten. Fear of the Bitten and Traitorous Blood. I kind of like. The only way that this hand would be better is if we were on the play. Opponent didn't even have a one drop. Wow. Could you imagine? Okay. Opponent has a Silver Chase Fox. Play a Mountain, play a Neonate. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Swamp. They play a Doomed Traveler. They stay back on defense. We draw Stromkirk Noble. We could put Fuhrer of the Bitten on Blood Crazed Neonate, and our opponent would have to double block it to kill it. We don't have a good target for Traitorous Blood. Kessig Wolf develops our board, but we would lose Blood Crazed Neonate for basically no value. I think we got to go with Fuhrer of the Bitten. Our opponent will be left with a Spirit after the fact. Question is, do we attack with Reckless Waif? Uh, and I think the answer is no. Opponent doesn't have white mana, so they can't just, like, activate Silver Chase Fox to deal with it. Okay. We take out our opponent's board. They get a spirit. Play Strom, Kirk Noble. Pass the turn. Yeah, I think if we attacked with Reckless Wave there, our opponent just chumps with Doom Traveler and eats the Reckless Wave with Silver Chase Fox. So opponent plays a Swamp. Sever the Bloodline to kill Stromkirk Noble. Whenever your opponent uses 4 mana removal on a 1 mana creature, that's how you know your 1 mana creature is good. Okay, we untap, we draw a Mountain, play a Mountain, go to combat, get in for 1, and then we'll play Kessig Wolf. Opponent goes to 19. Play the Wolf. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Plains. Bonds of Faith on the Kessig Wolf. Make it in for one. It's a really strong removal spell in Limited. They play Avicennian Priest. We untap. We draw Vampiric Fury. Um, so we can't attack. And we can't play anything. Because Traitorous Blood here would be absolutely minimum value. So we'll just pass. Reckless Way flips. Okay, opponent gets in for one. We take one and go to 17. Moan of the Unhallowed. All right. I'm starting to really wish that I had brought in Rage Thrower. <sighs> I'm kind of just drawing the wrong half of the deck right now because we keep drawing five drops. We only have three and we have 17 land. We should be fine. I don't know really what the deal is here. So opponent taps Merciless Predator. This lets them attack with, uh, without having to worry. They hit us for five. Opponent's last card is Cloistered Youth. We untap. Draw Fuhrer of the Bitten, which doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, I think we're dead. Because no spell we play this turn does anything. 
And then we're just going to be too far behind on the board. We are going to attack. When it takes the damage, but they are outracing us by far. This next turn we're going to get hit for 8 at least and go to 4. And we can't gain life. And we don't have um, any sort of like catch-up mechanic here. Oh, they even they can even flashback Mona the Unhallowed, uh, which also means they could flashback sever the bloodline. So, like, had I even played anything there, <laughs> they could have just killed it. All right. Well, that's unfortunate, but sometimes it happens. See you guys in round three. All right, round three. Here we go. All right, we'll play first. Uh, if we draw a land, this hand is good. If we draw two lands, this hand is pretty great. <sighs> yeah, I think it's too risky. I was gonna say, we have so many one-drops, it shouldn't matter, but apparently we didn't get a single one here. Mulliganing, um, I mean, with the London Mulligan, it's a little better, but, like, Mulliganing in Mono Red is never good, because you need all of the cards you can get. I think I have to keep this, just because Vampiric Fury makes Blood Craze Neonate easier to connect with. I'm going to drop our 5-drop, just because we're not playing it for so long. Start Mountain, pass the turn. Kind of hoping my opponent is a more controlling deck rather than an aggro deck, because that's what ours would... Our deck theoretically has a better matchup against. Okay. Opponent starts Island. Play a Mountain, play Neonate. Pass the turn. My opponent could be Zombies, they could be Spirits... They could be blue-red flashback spells with, uh, oh, what is it called? Not Fires of Undeath, it's, uh, free mana whenever you cast a spell from the grave, deal two damage to something, and I cannot, for the life of me, think of what that spell is. Okay, Selhoff Occultist, draw Curse of the Pierced Heart. Well, at least we're drawing spells we can play. Um, I'm gonna play Fuhrer of the Bitten. Because that's the only way we can swing past Selhoff Occultist. Otherwise we would just trade. Attack for four. The fact that we're not drawing mana really sucks. Okay, opponent takes four. Geist Flame is also very good against our deck, considering we uh, have a lot of X1s. Moto's lagging pretty hard and I don't know what's happening. Sensory Deprivation, they turned it into a 1-3. Oh no, okay, well... Uh, we draw Pitch Burn Devils, so curse our opponent, attack for one, and we're only attacking because we have to attack. Okay, opponent takes one, plays a mountain, they have five mana, they, Burning Vengeance, that's the card, they are a Burning Vengeance deck, uh, which our deck cannot possibly hope to beat. Uh, burning Vengeance with any real amount of value out of the grave. It's like, if I play Crew and Outlaw here, they just flashback Geist Flame um, and then kill it. <laughs> but we're still going to, because we have to. Game's not technically over yet. Attack for one. Put a blocks with the Occultist. They mill one with Deranged Assistant. They are running green. I imagine they just picked as many flashback spells as they could find which might be why they're running Shimmering Grotto in a third color. Oh man, double Burning Vengeance. Opponent's deck is very good. We draw a Mountain. Yeah, I don't think we can beat double Burning Vengeance. They can basically wipe our board by flashbacking a spell, which is pretty low cost. I think I'm gonna... I'm not gonna show them any more cards, especially not our top end. I don't want them to know what I'm curving into. Yeah. We're just going to hope for a really fast hand. I would love to play first. Neonate, Ashmouth Hound's good, but four lands is too many. No one or two drop. I got a mulligan. Curse the Pierced Heart's going to be too slow. We don't even have any, like, Brimstone volleys for good reach. There was one in our opening pack, I think, but I think Crew and Outlaw was more important. This sucks. We have to mulligan twice. <laughs> in a deck that should rarely ever have to mulligan. It's possible I should have just kept the seven, but, like... All right, we're going to put back a Mountain, put back Night Revelers. We're starting with our best one drop, and it's going to be very big very quickly. So let's hope that's enough. Opponent starts Island. 
ghoul collar spell milling burning vengeance well that's good to see for us we draw curse of the pierced heart i'm gonna play that this turn it's technically less damage than Fuhrer of the Bitten, but it's also a slightly more efficient usage of mana. Um, plus, our opponent might play uh, a creature specifically intended to block Noble, and uh, Fuhrer of the Bitten might be able to make that line a bad play. Opponent mills a Geist Flame. Sensory Deprivation. Alright, well, Fuhrer of the Bitten, um, had we played it last turn would have stopped our opponent from doing what they just did. So Stromkirk Noble still being able to attack through a sensory deprivation is actually really good. It means they have to use an additional removal spell to deal with that. Okay, opponent mulches. They mill a mountain and two dream... Well, they mill two dream twists and a memories journey. That was a pretty good mulch, I think. If they get a uh, second dep sensory deprivation... Wow. All right, play a mountain... Run out Crossway Vampire. Crossway? Crossway? It's probably Crossway, and I've just been, like, making an idiot out of myself this entire time. This is like, look at Kano. Doesn't... Doesn't English... <laughs> ever. Oh, man. So I understand what the green for it, green is for now. Opponent unsummons Crossway Vampire. Uh, they can just Memories Journey and put the Burning Vengeances back in their deck. And unless we draw another Fuhrer of the Bitten, or Vampiric Fury could get that up to a 0-6, I guess. First the Pierced Heart doing work. Alright, well, F6 through the rest of our turn. Opponent, Flashback's Memories Journey? Okay, they put back Burning Vengeance, Burning Vengeance, and um, Sensory Deprivation. They take one. Well, like, look at how cool our opponent's deck is. I love the Burning Vengeance deck. Wow, they drew Burning Vengeance. They Dream Twist themselves and kill Crossway Vampire. I think this game is over. Because my opponent is to the point where they can flash back, uh, like, three different great spells for them. Traitor's Blood doesn't do anything. Okay, we'll give them one more turn. But short of drawing a card we put on the bottom of the deck this game, the... Oh, no, because he doesn't even have haste. They don't have any humans. Oh, yeah. Yep. We're totally screwed. Opponent's, opponent's deck is like one of the best counters to ours because they consistently create tons of value. Second Burning Vengeance, yeah. This game is over. Congratulations, opponent. Good job. Uh, well, we got half our entry back because we did win a round. And, uh, yeah. Mono Red, while technically an archetype, is not... I guess it's not that great. Um, I will be doing some more uh, Innistrad flashback draft because I love it so much, so expect that in the limited slot coming up, um, just because it's my favorite format, and it's it's some of my favorite stuff to play. I haven't gotten to do several of the decks that I enjoy building, so hopefully we will uh, we'll be able to do that and see what happens. And hopefully I can get the uh, stream VOD to finally upload, for whatever reason it hasn't. So if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, please leave a like, uh, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. And remember, you can follow me on Twitch, same username over there as you find me on here. I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which are U.S. time zones. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys on the stream and hope you guys keep enjoying the content. I'll keep, uh, I'll keep it up. Hopefully I get to stream a couple extra times this week and next week. Um this upcoming week uh, after Halloween and the week after that, uh, because I will be quarantining strictly in preparation for going home for the holidays. I'll be gone for like a month and a half, during which time I may not be able to stream, but I still will produce daily content. So uh, just trying to keep everybody appraised of that. All right, well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!